Hi, I'm James. And I'm Karina. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Fireside. Fireside. We have some sing-song stuff for you guys tonight or today, whenever you happen to be seeing this. There's a song that uh, probably was the scariest one for me ever to do when I was about four, four or five years old. I sang this song in my church growing up, and I was so scared to sing it, I sat down on the front of the stage because my legs were shaking so bad. So I don't have that problem this time because I'm sitting, so no problem there. And I'm singing with you, <laughs> yeah. so... But uh, yeah, that helps too. But this song was a special one for me because it, it deals with the question, how come if we see all of these things that we, we read about in the Old Testament, in the Bible in the past, of God doing miraculous things, how come we're not seeing that right now? Why don't we see that right now? And as we've been looking at prayer in this last while, there's been some really uh, challenging things to think about uh, in the way that we pray, how we pray, why we pray, what we pray about, and of course, the, our relationship with who we pray to. And that's the whole point. Anyway, so this is a song called Miracles, and it's been a long, long time since I sang it before, so... Feel free to clap. <laughs> <laughs> back yesterday and God is God today God can do it again and again and again He's the same God today as He always has been yesterday now forever He's always the same there's no reason to doubt God can do it again I'm having trouble with this key so I'm going up doubt I know um, one of the things that my my walk with Christ has encouraged me and I guess lately has I've been reading my Bible and and praying and and I've been doing this Bible study called dangerous prayers and today it was talking about Isaiah 6 verse 1 to 8 
And it's talking about how Isaiah saw a vision of the Lord seated high and lofty in the throne and the, the train of his robe filled the temple and the seraphim are there. The sound of the praise is just shaking the temple. And Isaiah comes to this and he is terrified because he realizes that he is so unworthy to be in God's <clears throat> presence and the, the bigness and and miraculous sight of God. He's just like, I can't, who am I to be here? And one of the seraphim comes in and picks up a flaming coal from the fire with tongs and touches his lips. He's cleansed. And then the, the, he hears the Lord saying, who will go for us? Who can we send? And then Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Sometimes it's, it's such a crazy thought to think that I can be willing to let God be in control, to let God send me somewhere, to let God use me in a way that I have no idea what's coming. And that can be a really dangerous thought. It can be a, um, a scary thought to some people. Another thought is even just praying out loud. Like, that's dangerous. Because when you speak it, then you can't take it back. If you just keep it to yourself and think it, nobody else really knows. God might, God knows, but nobody else yeah. knows. Yeah, like praying for someone, an expectation that God will do something, out loud is a, is a lot harder because uh, mm -hmm. then there's expectation that, that he will actually do something. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we hope in him in that sense. And how often have we woken up and we do not feel thankful or even gone to bed and we don't feel thankful for that day and God commands us in the word of God in Psalms to offer up a sacrifice of thanks usually I, I hear praise because that's easy to do it's like God <clears throat> oh, we'll just list list your attributes but thanks brings it way more personable mm -hmm. so oh I have to think of something to be thankful for I have to bring joy back and it becomes a sacrifice to God where we yeah. can bring our, our thanks and we do it out loud. And as we do it out loud, we hear ourselves say it. And that becomes encouraging. As you are uh, listening to this, I hope you're encouraged to obey God and, and to take that step of obedience of in your prayer life to go farther, to be more willing, to be more um, vocal. To not give in to the enemy of of his lies of trying to keep us silent. And this is also an old song about people who stepped out in that kind of faith. Yeah. Written by a guy named... Rich Mullins. Sometimes the night was beautiful
Speaking of old ones, there was a, a song we did probably, what, 12 years ago? Pretty close. 11? 11 well, years ago? 2008. 2008. 2009. That's a long time ago. It was a song that, that talked about when we come to the Lord and we want to pray. And you know sometimes where you want to say something and you, the words just don't come? The good news is God already knows what's on your heart. He already knows what's on your mind. And you just come to him. It's the relationship that he wants. And so this song is about that, sometimes coming before God and just sitting in silence, being still before him, recognizing that he is God and that we can trust him with our circumstance, with our situation, and we don't have to be afraid.
it's been a while. We got one last one. It was our friend Bryce's birthday, which I guess technically is yesterday on Wednesday. Happy birthday, Bryce. It was running through my head a lot because this was one of his favorite songs. It's by Down Here and it's called Great Are You.
blessed tonight. May the things that are on your heart and your mind be the very things that you bring to the Lord who is mighty, who is great, who can hold the whole horizon in his view. And not just of the present, but of the past and of the future. May he give you all the comfort that you need this week. When I am afraid.